people who no longer had faith in Pol Pot's leadership. They had arrested him, but they had arrested him not for crimes of genocide or crimes against humanity. They'd arrested him for essentially being a political enemy. Four months later, Nate Thayer was invited to interview Pol Pot, who was now under house arrest and close to death. When I first spoke with Pol Pot, he came up to me and he put his arm on my shoulder and he said, uh, in this raspy voice, he said, Kim Squalchamore Yuhai, which means I've known your name for a long, long time. And that was the first thing he said to me. And he gave me this gentle, shy smile and uh, kind of looked at me and looked, gazed down and then took me by the arm and, and uh, walked me to uh, a little bamboo hut where he uh, begged me to understand why it was necessary for him to execute little babies. For hours. In a very rational way. And of course, we started off knowing that it might be very short, asking him the fundamental questions of, you are accused of uh, causing the deaths of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of innocent Cambodians. Uh, and uh, are you regretful? Are you sorry? And will you apologize? Which was a direct uh, question repeatedly. And he refused to answer the question. And I, I did get angry. And he threatened to end the interview uh, three times uh, within half an hour. Uh, because uh, that was not an acceptable answer to me as a journalist or as a, as a human being. Cambodians deserve better, and they deserved, and the world deserves uh, better uh, than uh, two journalists interviewing a genocidal maniac in the jungle in a bamboo hut. Two weeks later, in April 1998, Pol Pot died of natural causes. The madness unleashed on Cambodia by Pol Pot and his colleagues will never be forgotten, but so far it has gone unpunished. <laughs>